Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Anyone looking for a trained therapist? So, we finally got our first official look at the Suicide Squad on Arrow. The writers actually have big plans for them that include the big battle with Deathstroke this season and stuff that's happening in Season 3. So I'll talk about that as well as what's happening in the next couple of episodes. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm going to be doing a bonus Q&A video tomorrow too, so leave me any questions you want me to include in that. So let's start with our top five moments from the episode and then I'll talk about some of the really big comic book references and funny moments that I thought were really awesome and then I'll do my review. So careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, but here we go. Number five, Oliver's awful home movies. In keeping with the theme of the episode, Oliver steps into the kill box that is Slade's office. Felicity dropped the suicide reference, just kind of literally tying it to the Suicide Squad A story. But I love how you could just tell that Slade was setting this table for Oliver, so to speak. A buffet of death with an appetizer of awful memories. It's almost like we're watching Hannibal and Oliver is Will Graham being framed for the murder of Shadow by Hannibal Lecter being played by Slade. Shows within shows. I always love the scenes where characters sit and watch movies. In this case, there really wasn't any subtext to that Shadow movie. It was just Slade trying to make Oliver think about her. This really makes me wonder though, how many other awful home movies does Slade have? He strikes me as the kind of obsessive person who would just sit there and watch Shadow on a loop all night. That is whenever he's not busy watching Oliver's house on a loop. Number four, Diggle and Deadshot's bromance heart to heart. Not an action scene, but full of action. This was a really good moment for anyone who hasn't read the comics. Essentially, of all the Suicide Squad members, Deadshot is the closest to being a good person or a good person who just does really awful things. I totally loved the bromance that was going on between Diggle and Deadshot in this episode though, and later how Deadshot said that the drone strike was his way out. I think they were misleading us a little bit though. He probably expected to escape at the last second and just wanted them to believe he was dead. A character that proficient just doesn't lose the will to live because he's been working with Amanda Waller for so long. Maybe she just sucks the life out of you with those cold stares, and that's her superpower. Diggle's arc in this episode was really just recognizing that gray area, which is what the Suicide Squad is all about. It's just like the Thunderbolts in the Marvel Universe. I don't think they ever really get rehabilitated, but that's why it's so much cooler when you see them team up with the heroes. I'll talk about it again in a second, but Amanda Waller is actually going to be helping Oliver use the Suicide Squad to take down Slade in a future episode. That's what that whole last scene was about. Number three, we're tracking a new player. We're calling him Deathstroke. It's a little crazy that Amanda Waller, with all of her resources, does not know that Slade is the Deathstroke that they have been tracking. They kind of buried the lead a little, but in that moment, Waller basically gave Slade his call sign. I know Billy Winters wore the mask in season one, but did any characters ever use the name Deathstroke? I actually can't remember. This whole exchange with Waller though was just a teaser for Oliver co-opting the Suicide Squad to take down Slade. We don't know when they're going to be back, but I would guess that it's either going to be in episode 18, which is called Deathstroke, or in one of the final episodes. There's 23 total this season, but we only have details up to episode 20. The other thing I really loved about this last Argus scene was that it gives you the idea that something much, much bigger is coming this season, aside from the Oliver and Slade battle. It kind of seems like that's going to be the big thing that's happening, but since that's probably happening in episode 18, we have all these episodes after that, so clearly something else is going to be much bigger. I actually talked about Manu Bennett teasing Ra's al Ghul in a previous video. I can't quite remember which one it was, but I will have a playlist link at the end of this video, so you can actually scroll through all my Arrow Season 2 stuff if you want more details on it. Long story short though, the battle between Oliver and Slade is going to cause so much damage that Ra's al Ghul is going to come and deal with it. Number two, meet Task Force X. So this is the Suicide Squad, but Task Force X is actually a big comic book reference to an organization consisting of Checkmate, the Suicide Squad, and Argent. It was created in the comics to fill the void left by the Justice Society whenever they retired. And this was all back in the 80s, so this was a long time ago. The thing that really got me excited about them was that because the show has made it official, they can start developing the team and use them even more in season three. The showrunners said that they have this multi-season approach to developing these characters and the team, just like they're doing with the Birds of Prey starting in next week's episode. Think of this episode as like a teaser for future Suicide Squad episodes. And if they're really successful, they might even spin off a Suicide Squad show like they're doing for The Flash. That's a long ways off, so don't plan on seeing any more Arrow spin-offs for a long time. The Flash still hasn't even been given a series order yet, but there is a lot more Suicide Squad coming this season and in next season. 
And my number one moment, no surprise here, do you cuties need some help? I'm a trained therapist. With just a few lines, we get one of the biggest teasers all season long. Meet Harley Quinn, core member of the Suicide Squad, and backdoor to the Batman universe. Don't expect the Joker anytime soon, or Nightwing for that matter, but it's possible that we'll actually be seeing her character the next time the Suicide Squad is featured. The funny thing is that they listed her in the credits as deranged team member, which means they didn't want to officially reveal her as Harley Quinn yet. Why that is, I have no idea. But a lot of people actually thought that Cassidy Alexa was playing her, but Tara Strong was the one listed in the credits as being the voice. It's possible that they just dubbed over Cassidy Alexa just because Tara Strong has been doing the voice of Harley in all the Batman Arkham games lately. So it is really cool that they went straight to the, you know, source, so to speak, to get the authenticity of her voice. It would have been funny if they had used the original voice from the animated series, but I can totally understand them wanting to use someone who is currently voicing the character. It just makes for better continuity across all their properties. Here's a really important thing though, and it relates to the return of Harley in a future episode. In one of my earlier videos, I talked about Chekhov's gun. It's the idea that you never include something in a story unless you're going to pay it off later. Never make a promise that you don't intend to keep. And since they gave us Harley Quinn's voice, it's kind of like they're promising us that she'll be on the show at some point. So we will get to see her full on and soon. But no confirmation on which episode that's going to be. Now it's your turn though. Let me know what was your favorite moment from the episode. Harley Quinn, I know we're all thinking the same thing. Right now, here's all the really, you know, major comic book references that I saw and just some really funny moments. First off, Felicity totally had a stalker in college. This was just hilarious. Two, Diggle's booty call, during which we find out that Amanda Waller has also used the Argus suite for her own booty calls in the past. This is even funnier if you actually know the comic book version of her character. Three, the Kandak name drop is a reference to Black Adam. They haven't introduced the idea of magic on Arrow in a big way, but this makes it seem like they will in a very distant season, like season 5 or beyond. Billy Batson cameo anyone? 4. Ben Browder backdoor cameo as Ted Gaynor from the comics again. 5. Another shout out to Lila Michaels as Harbinger, the character from the comics. That character was actually given huge superpowers by the Monitor during the big Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline back in the 80s. And last one, number 6. Several shoutouts to Deadshot's daughter Zoe Lawton from the comics. It's possible that she might show up in season 3. So overall I gave the episode a solid B+. It was a ton of fun and the story was amazing and didn't get crushed under the weight of all these characters that they used. It was a really good dark arrow story. You have all these villains so naturally it only made sense for Oliver to be really dark too. The writers have been doing this amazing job of weaving all these different story arcs together this season for this big Deathstroke battle that's happening. But remember, that's not even the biggest thing that's going to happen. There's actually the threat of Ra's al Ghul casting a shadow over Slade. That's why Arrow has become one of my favorite shows this year. It just keeps unveiling bigger and bigger threats. Right now, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., as another example, has the Clairvoyant. But in order to match Arrow, they'd have to reveal some giant A-list supervillain behind the Clairvoyant. So let me know what you thought about the episode. And remember, Birds of Prey are coming next week. Be sure to subscribe to get my video. I'm also going to be posting my Q&A video for this tomorrow, so leave me all your questions in the comments. Right now, click here to learn all about what's going on in The Flash, and click here to learn all about Avengers 2. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.